So Pinterest, like all the other networks, has very similar things to the other networks, but maybe a different layout and so forth. I've logged into Pinterest, and at the top you have a bar with the with the logo of the network. It's it's a little P and a little pin, Pinterest. So that P will always take you back to your home screen, this sort of feed. Like every network has some home screen that shows you the content of what you followed. If you created a brand new account today, it had you ask, it, it had you follow various interests, various topics. Question. So the business business is different than the regular business? It is. The business one, uh, Pinterest, is better for a business because it has extra features. The personal one is missing some of these things like analytics, like stats. So it asked me to follow a few interests, which I can show you where to change that if, if you don't want those interests anymore. And if you didn't create the account now, there's a different spot for you to go to these interests. But basically it had me choose five topics of what my business is about. I'm getting a lot of cool photos here that are making me hungry because I chose I chose uh, various food ones because I bought Victor's Bakery. That's my fictional business and I get a lot of food related stuff. Well the point of this is uh, not to make us hungry but to also to look at inspiration of what other companies are doing. Always especially with Pinterest, you can see what other people are doing a lot easier than the other networks. On the other networks, you have to go to search. You search the keyword cookies. Let's see what other companies are tweeting about regarding cookies. On Facebook, I want to get inspiration this week to post on my Facebook. I can search Facebook for a topic and look at what other people are posting. But on Pinterest, it's kind of like just automatic. Right away on the home page, you start to see content and content and content. And my business is about baked goods. So as I look at the content here, hopefully I see a variety of kinds of content that I could do that. I think I can figure out how they did it, and I could try it. Some things are a lot harder than others, yes. But like this, this is not an extremely hard photo to take. People might think, oh, I can't take photos like these. These are too amazing. They must have a $1,000 camera. I'm saying if you only have a thousand dollar camera, what's wrong with you? You need a two thousand dollar camera. <laughs> no, you need you need anything. You need the, the the camera in your pocket. This will work. But the big idea with photography, and this is not a photography class, but I'll give you a bunch of photography tips in a moment, is look at the, what others have done and try to break it down. And you might not have the knowledge or the verbiage or the uh, or the way to explain what how it is made, but you can get the idea. It's sort of like the saying, I don't know what art is, but I know what I like. So this seems to be a photo that was put on a table or whatever, and someone took a photo of it directly. Not standing above it, not at an angle, but directly at the photo. And yeah, there's a carefully laid out background, but what's the background? An apple, because this is an apple sangria. And then there's another container of it back there, and there's a, there's a basket or a bushel basket, whatever that is. And uh, the lighting is pretty good. If we look at this other one of these mini pizzas, that, that never, it never looks like that on the plate, right? You put those down on a plate and they're flat. Well, somehow they propped up the little mini pizzas in a way that go directly toward the camera, right? Just putting more pizzas behind each one to prop up the one in front of it. This one over here, look at that. That is that is not a kind of photo that you need to take college classes for. Yeah, look at that. That's slices of banana on top of a pizza crust, looking straight down. Yeah, some of them are much more complex. This one, very complex. This is a collage. This is a bunch of photos put together on a white background with text. That takes a lot of effort, because that's graphic design right there. It's not just a photo. It's graphic design. That same one about the caramel apple sangria, that's another shot of the apple, uh, of the drink, uh, from a little bit higher up. And it has been collaged with one shot and then text and then the other shot. That does take more effort. This one over here about making those pizzas, step by step of each step of making the pizza. 
take a photo of putting the uh, the tortilla at the bottom of the cupcake, the muffin tin, then the next shot of putting the sauce, then the next shot of the cheese, the next shot, etc. So that collage stuff. I've mentioned a website before that for free you can do some basic graphic editing. Anyone remember that? Starts with a P-I... Pixlr, exactly. Oh. Pixlr.com was a website, is a website where you can go and make some simple collages, crop your photos, add text to the photos, to try to create some of the kinds of pins that you see other people doing. But again, you, you may have the right tools, but that doesn't mean you can use them. I can lead you this far to show you pin Pixlr, but I can't really teach you how to use Pixlr. You can explore it on your own, you can use it for free, try to figure it out. What does this button do? I made a mistake. Undo. No problem. Or you can take some of our classes here. We offer classes in Photoshop, in other graphic design software, to learn how to edit your photos. Again, for free. Do you have classes on Illustrator? We do. It's part of our IMCP program. We offer Illustrator, Photoshop, Flash, Dreamweaver, all that great stuff. So I'm seeing a lot of content. This is all in the in the first screen here. This Pinterest icon will always take you back to the home screen. Because we are a business account, we have analytics and ads. If you're not a business profile, a business page, you don't have these extra features. Analytics is the statistics of your account. And as a basic personal account, they feel, well, a person doesn't really need to know this info. A person doesn't need to see their, their reach or their impressions. A person is just sharing fun stuff. But a business needs to know this. This pin went viral. This pin did well. And then, of course, because it's a business account, there is a whole section of ads. Just like Facebook has their ad system, Pinterest has their ad system. Twitter has their ad system. You don't get that as a personal account. We're not going to go into ads in Pinterest because what we talked about on Facebook regarding ads applies here as well. But basically, you pay Pinterest some amount of money. It can be very low. You pay Pinterest some amount of money to have your, your pins reach more people. Just like in the real world, I pay more money to show my ad on more channels on TV. Or I pay more money to show my billboard on more freeways on the road. I pay the networks to reach an audience. Very common thing to do nowadays. Right in the middle, we've got a search box, just like every network. This lets you search inside of Pinterest. And in this case, it's also showing trending ideas, trending topics, trending keywords, beach wedding graduation party ideas. We'll look at uh, search a little bit more a little later. <coughs> but this is also useful for finding content just like the other networks. Parmesan roasted potatoes. I better do that one later. <laughs> then we've got uh, this little compass. This is a compass. You click on that, and that's the Explore tab. This is Explore Trending Topics and Ideas. We're going to see the value of this in a moment. But if I had set up my account, and I'm all about technology, I'm going to see a lot of stuff about technology. Here I might see a lot of stuff about food, because this account was set up for food. And on the left side, we'll see various trending topics which we'll see what the value of that is a little later. Next, that is a plus button. This is to share on Pinterest. I'm going to add to Pinterest. There's a few different ways to add to Pinterest. We'll look at that in just a bit. 
and then notifications. Notifications is this little icon that um, will tell you you've got a new follower, you've got a reply. It'll it'll keep you up to date. Then the last icon is my profile. I want to look at a couple of things here. Uh, hover over my profile and click my profile. Right now, my profile, since I've just created it, it's very sparse. There's nothing really to entice people to follow me. Like I've said previously, one of the first things you want to do is fill in this profile as much as possible. You want to have the name of your business. You want to have the icon of your business. You want to have a biography of your business. The way to edit that is you can either hover over your icon and go to settings, or you can click on this. What would you say this icon is right here? A bolt. A bolt. Good. Most people don't get it. That's a bolt or a nut, isn't it, actually? Um, and uh, that's the settings. Almost every other social network has a gear or something else to show that that's your settings. Here, you know, it's, it's a hexagon shape. It's, it's, a, it's a nut, nuts and bolts. So that's their icon for settings. Click on that, which is the same as going to your icon at the top right and clicking settings. And here this will show you your, your settings for your, for your account. Here's where you can uh, set your password, language, email, business type. If you need to change any of that, you can change it there. Scrolling down, search privacy. There's a couple of options here. Search privacy, hide your profile from search engines. Uh, this is off, and I highly recommend you leave it off. If you turn this on, this will hide you from Google. This will hide you from Bing and Yahoo and such. Why would you want to hide yourself from the search engines? There's very little reason to do this, and it's off, but if you want to, you can hide yourself from the search engines. <coughs> these next two, you, you need to decide if you want these on or off. Personalization. Use sites you visit to improve which recommendations and ads you see and use information from our partners to improve which recommendations and ads you see. So every network nowadays is going to show you ads. We're at a point now where some of these networks are over 10 years old. <coughs> Facebook is like 12 years old, or 13 now, I think. And Twitter is 11 years old. Some of these networks are, you know, a decade old. And in internet time, to have a website for over 10 years, it's a long time. Websites come and go. Networks come and go. So what I'm getting at is that all the networks have ads nowadays. You can't avoid it. Turning these off will not stop showing you ads. It will just stop showing you ads that perhaps are more relevant to you. I'm a business about baked goods. I might want to see ads about food and that sort of thing. If I turn these off, it'll show me generic things about technology, about nature, about, you know, different things that my business is not about. It might not matter to you. You may never look at the ads. You may skip the ads, you know? So you don't have to change this. It doesn't affect your Pinterest experience, really. But that's something to check. The way it works is it puts a cookie on your computer that tracks you and shows and monitors basically what websites you visited. If you visit a lot of technology websites, it'll show you technology ads. If you visit a lot of food websites, it'll show you food ads. So on the privacy level of it, you know, that's one reason maybe to turn it off so that it doesn't track you, but that doesn't mean it won't show you ads. Here's the button to deactivate. So at the end of the day, if the, you created a fake account and you don't want it anymore, you have the option right there to deactivate. Profile. So here's the part to put your business name, change your icon. Nowadays, all the networks are using either a round or square space 
for your icon. If your business icon is a rectangle, if your logo for your business is a rectangle, most likely it will crop it and it'll look really weird. Most networks nowadays are using a circle or a square or sometimes a rounded square that the corners have a little roundedness. So um, using, Pix uh, using Pixlr, you could crop your logo first to be a square shape and then upload it here so that it fits. When I created my Pinterest account, it gave me an address on Pinterest. So I have an address, pinterest.com slash victorsbakery0075. It gave it to me randomly, and I probably don't want that. I probably want pinterest.com slash victorsbakery. You cannot use spaces. You cannot use a symbols like apostrophes. It's got to be one word. That's your address. The problem is this will not tell you if the name is taken until you try to save it. So what people do is they pick their perfect name, they fill in all of this stuff, they click save, and it says the name is taken. So I would say if you're trying to claim a name, type it in first, and then click save and see if, it, see if it's taken. And you will see that, whoops, that name is taken. Some of the shorter, more common names are taken. Because Pinterest has over like 200 million users globally. It's been around several years, and your perfect name might have been taken, especially if it's a, if, if it's a bit of a generic name. So I'm going to leave it as is. I'm not going to uh, try to change that. It's a fake account anyway. But at some point... If it's a real account, you want to claim your real name, your real address. There's a spot for about you. I think there is a limit, like 160 characters or something, although it doesn't tell you until you try to save it. And the about you is a spot where you can add some more sentences and keywords about your business so that people can find you. Location makes sense what that is, and then website. If you've got a website, you have people on Pinterest, and you can guide people back to your website, put your address there, and then there's a little procedure to confirm your website. Uh, I don't really talk about it in the class how to confirm because it's a little technical. It depends on the person's website, but basically it's going to walk you through some steps to load your website, copy some code from Pinterest into your website, you confirm, and then what will happen is that when people visit your profile, there will be a little check mark that says this account is confirmed. As we use Pinterest and add pins to the account, there will be a way to showcase pins. This is what Pinterest calls pinning a pin to the top. On Facebook, you can pin a post as the very first one that people always see. On Twitter, you can pin a tweet as the very first one. They call it a showcase, and you can showcase more than one pin as your very first pin that people could always see. One thing that I say right away for people using Pinterest, check this screen of notifications. The default is you're going to get a ton of emails especially as you start to get popular because you're gonna get emails from everyone by email every time someone saves your pin, likes your pin, comments on your pin. I personally turn all of these off because I manage my Pinterest in Pinterest, not in my inbox. I get enough stuff in my inbox. You can fine-tune this by having a don't send me this one or that one, but it's a lot. I would say, personally, it's fine to turn all of those off and remember to log into Pinterest.com. Or use it on your mobile device. There's the Pinterest app. You can get it from the App Store. You can connect your social networks, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, but that's not that you're going to share to those networks, really. You use Buffer for that. 
these are that you also are able to log in to Pinterest through these networks. And it can recommend your friend that's on Facebook is also on Pinterest. Why not follow them? You can connect your Gmail and it'll tell you who in your address book is also on Pinterest for you to connect with them. And that's it for sort of settings. If you make any setting changes, you want to save that. Any questions on this settings screen? All right, let's go back, hover over your icon on the top right and click My Profile again. Let's say I filled it in and I have a description and a graphic and all of that. Well, then we've got, if someone visits your profile, in my case, my link is pinterest.com slash victorsbakery0075. If someone visits your profile, they're going to be able to see your pins and your boards. And at the moment, I have zero pins and no boards. As I was saying in the notes, I recommend to create boards to help you organize. Let's practice then creating a board and then I'll give you the advice on your boards. You've got pins, you've got boards. Click boards and then click the plus sign. Create board. All right, so name of the board, keep it secret or not. Secret are boards that are going to be separate that are not going to be public, that you can allow certain people to view. So it's setting privacy on a board. Pinterest has public boards, which is the default, and secret boards, which are private. You can figure out the use for the secret ones. Maybe you can have, let's say you create a secret board that is full of coupons. And through other means, we promote. Follow us on Pinterest to gain access to our secret board of coupons. So one reason to keep it secret is to entice people to follow me. Either way, it needs a name. And so let's say I'm Victor's Bakery. I'm going to create a board called Cookies. So in theory, what I'm posting here, what I'm pinning here, are all about cookies. But before I do that, notice the, the placeholder text. Name it like places to go, recipes to make. Notice it's using a more of an active voice. The, the name of the board itself is a call to action, a CTA in marketing terms, a CTA, call to action. Some words that entice you to do something, something that calls you, calls to you to take an action. It's not, it's not telling you, call it cookies or, you know, real estate. It's telling you, be active call to action. So, cookies to bake. Or, fun cookies for kids. Or, you know, some way to explain what the board is or what they can get out of it for following you. Use an active voice. I'm creating boards. Say bad cookies, good cookies to bake, gooder, uh, healthy cookies to bake with kids. 
Look at all those keywords. Look at that, all those ideas and concepts that are condensed into one title. And look at that call to action. Here's something that you can do. Parents, bake, kid, bake cookies that are healthy with your kids. Now, the board's always going to be empty because that doesn't exist. Healthy cookies. But um, here, it's a little more active. So, three to five recommendation, three to five, three to five pins, uh, boards for your account to start off. Okay, let's say I'm a realtor. I want to get hired. Question. Uh, I'm, let's say I'm a realtor and I want to get hired to do real estate. I can create boards for the various territories where I have houses to sell. Beautiful houses in Chula Vista. Affordable houses in La Jolla. Right? I'm going to uh, make these boards about the locations where I'm selling houses and putting some adjectives, being active, to tell people what's in that board. And ultimately, I'm trying to get people to call me or to hire me. Well, again, when we create the pin, then we'll see the secrets of how to use Pinterest to uh, guide the traffic. But you want to create some boards for organization. Then afterward, edit the details. Recently, maybe last year, there when you were when you created the board, it would also have a bunch of extra options. Now you don't see these options until after you create it. I don't I don't quite like that, but I guess it's useful if you know how to do this because then you'll be ahead of those that don't know how to do this. So watch this. After you create the board, then then there is the option to add more of the board. So go ahead and create something. And after you create it, this particular board also then has options. Here they use a pencil. This pencil has extra options. I'm going to edit the board. This will let you change the name again. But look at all this extra stuff that wasn't available when you created the first time. Extra stuff that will help you get found, such as a description, more space, for you to write more of what this business is to hopefully get you more views. And a category. All of those categories that you see when you search are right here. So, again, make sure you do this on your boards because nowadays it's not obvious for people. So your competitor, if you and your competitor both are the same sort of business and you both get on Pinterest, Let's say you get on Pinterest, and then they see you're on Pinterest, and they get on Pinterest. Well, they don't know, probably, that you can further get ahead of them by setting a description and setting a category. <coughs> here's where you can then activate secret if you want. And here's where you can add collaborators. I think the Pinterest way to do this is the worst one of all the networks, meaning if I want other people to help me manage my Pinterest, this is how you do it. On a case-by-case -case basis, on a board-by-board -board basis, you add collaborators, where you add their email address manually. The other networks let you add more people to help you manage your account a little easier. Here, it's on a board-by-board -board basis. So if you've got 14 boards and you need the other people in your business to help you manage them all, you have to click 14 times on each of the networks, I mean, on each of the boards, and add their names on each one. I don't believe there's like a bulk action to do it all at once. I really need to do that. So I would say here afterward, edit uh, the board. Edit the board to add a description and a category. And 
collaborators. I keep writing a description, but it's not saving. When, sometimes what happens is when you save it, uh, it doesn't seem to appear. You have to refresh it. Refresh your screen and see if that keeps it. So definitely do this. Definitely tweak these settings because your competitor probably didn't do it. And here's a spot for you to delete the board if you need to. Can you choose, um, like on your board, it has multiple pictures. Can you choose not just the cover? picture but the other ones that are showing? No, when, you, when you've got pictures here eventually it'll let you pick which picture is first but then every other picture after that is the one in order. And you can't change the order anymore? No, the only way to change that order is the order that you added them, which is not that helpful. Oh. Question? Um, I'm trying to do like a field table um, but there's no order in For architecture, we have to go, I mean, for real estate, we have to go elsewhere over here. I think there's a bit more of a generic one. Uh, let's, yeah, I'm looking at categories, products, quotes, travel, weddings, other. It might, unfortunately, have to be other, so it's, that's not that useful. But I don't see anything else because, yeah, architecture is not quite real estate. You could possibly do it. But... Um, I don't really see professional services or Yeah, they don't have every, you know, it wouldn't really be products, but they don't have everything unfortunately. Um, not really travel, but I would have to go for our other. But use the description definitely. And then we will add real estate stuff in the board to compensate for it not being in a proper category. Mm -hmm. All right, so I don't have any pins here yet. There's a little bit more styling we could do here after we add a pin, adding a cover image. We'll get back to that in a moment. I'm going to click my icon right here to go back to my profile. That's the same as hovering over your icon on the top right and clicking profile. I'm going to go back to your profile. Sometimes what happens is whatever board I created does not appear right away. So you have to kind of wake it up with a refresh or a reload in the web browser. So I get a board. And this is what I was saying about adding pins to the board because it'll just look empty. Chuck's account and my account are older ones. We were grandfathered into the system, so our boards look a little bit different. Newer boards might look like this, where it's sort of like you know, six icons like that, whereas the one that Chuck had had one icon big and a few at the bottom. So you might have different views, different designs. and It's just the, the nature that you have a newer account or an older account or a business or a personal. But that's why I said in the notes, create as many as you want, but then you want to add enough pins so that it doesn't look empty. If this looks like this and there really isn't much there, people are going to think, well, why would I follow that board? There's not much to look at. So uh, you add pins. We'll see how to add pins in a moment. But here uh, I've got one board one uh, collection of content and I would recommend as I said you add you add a few more maybe three maybe two three to five or something you add some boards to organize your content you might either strategize that you create your boards first and then add the pins or you add pins and then create boards both of those strategies work so two tactics Create boards first, and then populate them with your pins, or 
have a set of pins in mind first, and then add them to the boards. Then create the boards and add them to the boards. So I, I often find that I kind of do both. I have an idea that I'm going to create these boards to put these things. But as I start to put more pins, I realize, well, we need these other boards that fit a little better in these ideas. So let's say I added, let's say I added some boards. I'm going to look at pinning or adding pins. But any questions on, on boards, the concept of boards? Yeah. Um. If we have a business board, is it showing it to everybody on Pinterest or just other? Yes, everyone. 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 So that's what I want. I want customers to find my business. So Pinterest will show your board to everyone if it's a personal or business page. All right. So uh, to add content to Pinterest, we have two big ways and then sub methods. So how to share to Pinterest. We have either original content, which is photos, videos, text, links you create, and then we have fancy word, repurposed content. So this is other people's photos, videos, text links. And the culture of Pinterest is much more about sharing. This is much more okay than in other aspects. All of social media is pretty okay with sharing other people's stuff. Most of the time people want this. I want my photo to go viral. I want my link to reach more people. I don't want my, you know, I don't want my, uh, my photo being stolen and all of that, so the short answer is don't put it online. Unfortunately, you know, whatever you put online can travel all over the internet without your consent. So really the short answer is if you don't want it to get out there, out of your control, don't put it on the internet. Pinterest is very open about all of this, about sharing. And I want this. I want my content being repurposed. I want my picture to be shared with 20 people, with 100 people. So we'll look at both of these, we'll look at both of these tactics and what the value is. And I'll say Think about 20% repurposed and 80% original. If I'm going to post 10 things this month, how many repurposed things is that? Two. I'm going to post eight things that are mine originally. You can tweak these numbers, of course. But as much as possible, you want to share your own content. And we will see why it's important to share other people's content right now. The way we would do this is you can go back to the home screen. You're going to see a bunch of content, hopefully related to what your business is. Or, better yet, let's look at the Explore tab. Try to find a topic on the left side of what your business is. Mine is food. So there's a topic of what my business is. I've clicked on it, then there will be subtopics, like there's a whole topic on pancakes and uh, top recipes from Food Network. We'll just pick one. Pancakes. So here's a bunch of pins all about pancakes. Who knew you can have so many pictures of pancakes? <laughs> Alright, so my purpose here is what? Nutella stuffed pancake? That's impossible. 
All right, so uh, my, my purpose here is I'm Victor's Bakery. I sell cupcakes. I sell pancakes. I sell whatever. I sell this stuff. And I want to post on Pinterest so that people find me, so that they visit my business and buy my pancakes, my cupcakes. So I could either shoot my own photo and share it, or I can repurpose someone else's. I can look here at different people's photos, and let's say this chocolate chip pancake, we do that one too. Let's say you click on the, th on the thumbnail, you'll see a magnifying glass will appear. You click on the thumbnail, it opens up to show you. This is their pin. This is what they've done here. And I have the option to save it. I have the option to then pin it to my boards. I'm not stealing their photo. I'm not taking it from them. I'm repurposing it. I'm helping them. I'm giving free advertising to them. If I click Save, it says, OK, which, um, which board do you want to put it into? You know, I just have a board of healthy cookies to bake with kids. Well, I can create a board. I can create a board with a suggestion. Yes, this is giving free advertising to other people, maybe even my competition. But the nuance of this, thinking, of, thinking about it a little bit more of, of what's in it for me, find someone else's pin that relates to your business. Save it, pin it to any of your boards. Purpose. Send an alert. Whoever posted that is going to get a notification in their notification screen that says Victor's Bakery pinned or saved your pin. So the whole problem with me not getting any followers on these networks is no one knows I exist. One way to start to get them to know that I exist is for me to be active. Oops. Save that, yes. Um, Fiona from Just So Tasty will get a notification on Pinterest that says, Victor's Bakery saved your pin. They may then say, who's Victor's Bakery? And they click on my icon to view my profile, to read my biography, to see my pins, and decide perhaps follow. Or they may save something of mine. So that's exactly what we talked about last month. You are active on social media. You are social on social media so that people know you exist, so that then you get those results. Likes, shares, comments, follows. Sends an alert to let, those, to let others know you exist. You may get a like back, a comment back, a follow back. And ultimately we're looking for follows. We're looking for, uh, we're trying to get uh, followers so that when I post something original, that 80%, I get likes, I get comments, I get clicks to my website to buy my product. So let's, uh, let's take one more break for you to then think about that if you'd like to do it. You search other people's stuff, you click, you click save, and you save it to your own 
boards. You can create a board simply called Other People's Stuff and save all their stuff there. That's fine. Although it's a little better to actually be posting it or pinning it to some place that makes more sense. Let's take a break so you can kind of look at that for a moment. When we come back, we'll talk about pinning um, real, uh, your own content, and the nuances and how to link it back to your site and all that good stuff. It's, eight, it's 11.20. Take a break until 11.30, and then we'll go on. And on this break, actually, I need to take a break, and the school policy is that the instructor needs to take a break. We all need to take a break. So I'm going to lock the door. I'm going to ask the to step out. We'll be back in uh, 10 minutes. Everyone needs to take a quick break. Oh, because I need to take a break. Oh, so.